Jokwa ze kere mende e oma atiba Baba wani kyo lo wo kwe kogbo wo ziko yi wo fa We kwe kogbo kwa ale A monarch who is aging but not growing old possesses outstanding cerebral capacity which generates a standing ovation of great intellectual minds. Intellectualism does not come in a day. It's a result of hard work. I have a very strong and unceasing appetite to read, to acquire knowledge. Essential progenitor of the Yoruba myths. A legendary custodian of Yoruba culture and tradition. He has uh, what we call wisdom. The type given to King Solomon or Suleiman. Wise, deep and philosophical. The history of the old Oyo Empire is an example of the legacy of outstanding organizational skills, robust style of governance, rich culture and tradition, military virtue and trade that the forefathers of the Yoruba people bequeathed to them. Remarkably, Oronyo, the first king of Oyo, inherited the part of his father's land where the ancient building that was used as a palace was situated. Consequently, he was given the title, the Alafi, meaning the owner of the palace. Oronyo inherited their father's palace and the land. <laughs> Taking an exploratory journey through history, Oyo has heard about 40 kings who are referred to as Obas in Yoruba language before Alafi Adeniro Adeyemi II, the father of the current Alafi of Oyo, was enthroned. Before this time, precisely on October 15, 1938, God blessed Oba Adeniro Adeyemi II and his wife Olori Bironke Akonke with a baby boy and was named Lamidi Atonda Olaiwala Adeyemi. I was born before my father became the Alafi on 15 October 1938. I can recollect vividly that I was sent at very early age to a kindergarten school at Idiokwe. They call it Ololini. Alafi Adeniro Adeyemi II was a devoted Muslim, but his love for Western education and readiness to pay any price for his young son to access quality education suggested that he probably had a divine instinct concerning Prince Lamidi Olaiwala's destiny. For instance, at a time when nursery education was uncommon, Oba Adeniro used his position to devise a kindergarten education at St. Andrew's Demonstration School for his son before he later sent him to a Quranic school at Isein. Although my father was not uh, literate in the Western education, but he happened to be very close to the colonial officers who came to a year. And he himself was a lover of education and he wanted to make his siblings to let down, get sound education. After having completed Sunat 3 in the primary school, I was withdrawn and sent to Isain to study the Quran. After Prince Lamidi had finished his Quranic education at Isain, his father, Oba Adeniro Adeyemi II, brought him back to Oyo, but surprisingly, not to the loving and waiting hands of his mom in the palace, 
Instead, he sent him once again to go and stay with the headmaster of St. Andrew's Demonstration School, now St. Andrew's College, or your. This was done not for the acquisition of elementary education alone, but for the young prince to experience an efficient home training which perhaps could be considered unbecoming of a royal prince. In other words, the young Lamidi Adeyemi, though, as it were, was born with a silver spoon, his father never allowed him to use the silver spoon because he rated virtues like perseverance, humility, tolerance and other qualities so high and indispensable for anyone who will occupy the exalted position of the Alafi in future. Talking about Alafi, Lamidi Olai Wala Adeyemi the third, what? Why is he so unique? Why is he so different? Basically, we believe that God has been preparing this young man for this position, even when we did not know about it. Why is he the only child that is being thrown here and there all over the place? If not for the fact that God was preparing him quietly. Eventually, Alafi Adeniro Adeyemi II sent young Prince Lamidi Adeyemi to Abekuta, where he lived with the then Alaki of Egbaland, Oba Sa Oladipu Ademola, one of the few literate monarchs at that time. Prince Adeyemi was able to learn a lot in Abekuta until the 1948 riot against tax without representation broke out. This protest by the Egba women, which was led by late Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, forced the Alaki of Egba land, Oba Oladipu Adimola, to abdicate his throne and proceed on exile to Oshobo, which became another opportunity for young Prince Lamidi Adeyemi to learn palace administrative techniques. I was one of those who accompanied the Alaki to Oshobo on exile. Why is so good? I became very close to the old man, to, to, to Salada Kwadimala, the Alaki of Egwa land. He took me as his son, was very close to him. I started to study the palace administration there while with him. On the advice of the Alaki of Egwa land, Prince Adeyemi was taken to Lagos, where he lived with Sir Kuforola Apayomi in Kefi, Ikoyi, Lagos. He attended Boys Modern School of Balinde and later Tinumbu Methodist School to complete his primary school before he proceeded to the prestigious St. Gregory's College of Balinde where his academic intelligence continued to stand out. It is pertinent to say that Obalinde used to be a place where people from different ethnic groups settle in Lagos. Hence, living in this community requires sagacity and a good dose of native intelligence. For obvious reasons, Crown Prince Olai Wotla felt at home in this challenging environment. He had his own share of youthful adventure in sports. He was a skillful footballer and was nicknamed Stanley Matthews after a popular British footballer in recognition of his dribbling mastery. He was also a long distance runner as well as a dexterous boxer fondly referred to by his boxing fans as the Slumber Boy. Everybody knows me in Lagos Island and mainland as the dribbler at San Limato. In boxing, I was named Slumber Boy. Slumber Boy in the sense that I put them to sleep. I had over 60 bouts and I lost only two. All these things are the trait of somebody who is testing to be great. Athlete today, boxer today, footballer today. In sport, sporting activity is no longer mere sport. It has become big business. Prince Olaiwola Adeyemi left St. Gregory's College with a very good result and would have traveled to a London university for a degree course in law. Unfortunately, he lost his father, Alafi Adeyemi II, unexpectedly causing this ambition to be aborted. Prince Adeyemi didn't allow this setback to deter him. Rather, he encouraged himself 
and picked up a job at the Royal Exchange Assurance Company in Marina, Lagos, where the series of trainings he had received over the years, coupled with his diligence and proficient writing skill, were brought to bear to earn him a rapid promotion at work. Eventually, with his innate acumen and knack for business, he invested in automobile business and other forms of businesses which ultimately paid off, causing him to climb the ladder of success, so much so he became a landlord in Lagos at a very young age. At the age of 21, I already had a building of my home. Because of the, my effort in taking care of the buildings where I rented from Mr. Oponu Wuzu, the man was from Badagri, but he had a lot of property. Prince Adiyemi continued to add to his educational attainment by attending several courses, both within and outside Nigeria. It was during this period that he got married to his first love, Miss Abibat Nilola Oladili, now Ayaba Abibat Nilola Adiyemi. <laughs> It is indeed remarkable to underscore the fact that from his youthful years, the Crown Prince Adeyemi knew what he wanted in life and he pursued it with passion without indulging in any frivolity. Hence, his life thereafter became strictly dedicated to his job, his family, and his study, a pattern of life he holds jealously to heart, even till date. Baba Jenny Katoni Aki Kaju, today she was a girl, Luria woman, Atoma Egma, Atoma Buru, Tokusodo, all one of your shima jay, Vashima Kawi, Vashima Jenya, all she said, Gidi Gidini. To ya ipe to ba ji ni aro ago meje to ba ti ji lago marun ago meje ti o lo si bi ise to e pe kofi le ba se fun abi ti la san le se fun ta ago meje n ba lu alamu nbe ni egbe kan ta gbe sibe to ba ti le dun ta ago meje ba lu ti alamu yen ba e dun ko si ko da ko ma ti mu cup ti ko ma ti gbe senu lara ta la mo edu ko to e to ba ko wo alelenu a father, very, very loving, very caring. You know, because of um, the responsibility of being on the throne, you know, that um, closeness, that um, expression of tenderness has reduced a bit. But despite that, he still finds time to take care of his children. Kabizi will wake up very early in the morning. <laughs> Or who jog around or you ask anybody in Oyo. He will take his children, all of us, take us around the town to jog. And um, he will sit us down and teach us about life. In recording the significant landmarks in the life of Allah Fionlai Wala Deyemi III, it is pertinent to accentuate the circumstances that led to his enthronement as the Allah of Oyo Kingdom. But how it became alive it was the work of God. You know there are three stages. Nomination by the family whose turn it is to produce candidate or candidates. Presentation of the selected candidate to the kingmakers who is select the man they want. And thirdly, approval by the government. Proved. Before La Midi Atanda, uh, Omalo Olodu Biyere became the Alafin, and Alafin had been appointed in the wrong way. Oba La Midi Adiyemi was selected among other interested contestants to become Alafin in the year 1968, but the government of the day delayed his coronation and he was not crowned until January 1971. And so he became the Alafi of your kingdom, Ikuba Bayeye, Alashe Ekeji Orisha.
The installation of KBAC Kubabayeye marked the beginning of another journey, saddled with a huge responsibility for Alafi to protect, defend, and project the Yoruba culture and tradition for which he is so proud of. KBAC, the Alafi of Oyo, has brought his education, his exposure, his superlative native intelligence, and sterling leadership attributes to bear in the discharge of his role as a paramount ruler having a clear understanding of the enormity of the function of the Alafi. There is an age-long adage in Yoruba language which says, Ishedale luloyo, ajishebi oyo lari, oyo ki ishebi eni kokon, meaning oyo is a pace setter that is second to none. This adage underscores the beauty of democratic values and the concept of separation of power in the Yoruba monarchical system. For instance, the concept of Oyomisi, which is the body of wise men who constitute the cabinet of the Alafi of Oyo. It's a Dale Loyo that is due process is the nature of government in the Empire. The military commission you have system the Aran Kakafu. 16 the upper keda and 15 lower keda or two kakafu, ushi kakafu, balogu or two balogu, ushi balogu, lieutenant, lieutenant general, all those who we are seeing the kakafu. So, by military formation, it was one of the best at that time in Africa, and the ingenuity of our rulers in New York demonstrate that the Africans have brain and Africa can also match any other community outside the world. They were surprised because the OMC system survived it today. The Megagan only only the OMC. This is Basong of Oyo. Agbati only and it's a telemilly. Samu. Oni Eniketa. Alakpeni Oni Enikeni. Lagbona Oni Lose Kano. Ti Alak Akini Kunsei Ekepa. Ase Pa Lose Kiji. Ase Pa Ade. Lua Yolo Kwa Mwa Bia Tin Se Jwa Bagan. Awaje Minister Falafi. I want Bale and the governor. I want to know more about Alec Pimoni, Boyabi, and my leg mass of it. He said, Daniel, you're only one woo. Tion Fidak and Ely. I saw him away. I laugh in Laura. He's taking me away. I laugh in Laura. It's a cause so what? Larry at a laughing. Tiba by ye, Tobalo. Progress in Oyo Kingdom is not only attributable to the good relationship between Kabiesi, Olaiwala Adeyemi, and the Oyomisi. Kabiesi also uses his goodwill with past and present military or civilian leaders at both the federal and state levels for the benefit of Oyo Kingdom. His Imperial Majesty Obaolaiwole Adeyemi has carried out many assignments for the country and is well appreciated for the quality of his delivery. For instance, in 1975, Alafin was invited as the only Oba from Yoruba land to perform the holy pilgrimage to Mecca with General Murtala Muhammad. The federal government honored him with the national honor of CFR in 1979. In 1980, he was appointed the pioneer chancellor of the newly established University of Sokoto, now Othman Danfodio University in Sokoto. Kabiesi served the university so much that he was recommended again and again till he spent three terms totaling an unprecedented 12 years tenure as chancellor. Suffice to say that Obadi Emi III presented several papers throughout this period that he was deservedly honored with Doctor of Letters, LLD, Honoris Causa. And owing to his remarkable contributions to Othman Danfodio University, 
Kabiesi Adeyemi was appointed the Chancellor of the University of Meduguri. He's a genius by any standard and he speaks impeccable English. And when he speaks English, we would think that he had memorized it. He's very vast in the history and tradition of Yorubas. It's a repository of the custom of the Yorubas. And it's a man who will do anything to preserve the tradition of Yorubas. In his primary constituency as a foremost traditional ruler, Obadiemi III has used his position to better the lot of not a few royal majesties by facilitating the elevation of many of them to beaded crown kings, not to mention his passionate clamor for the continuous improvement of their welfare. As Kabiesi Ikuba Bayeye celebrates another birthday, it is a fervent wish and prayer of his subjects, his friends, his family and well-wishers that God will grant him many more years of peaceful and fruitful reign as the Alafi Ikuba Bayeye Alashe Ekejorisha. From the bottom of my heart, on behalf of my junior ones, I want to thank you for being a wonderful father. You have been a father in a million. Very caring, very loving. You gave us a good education. What we are today, because of God and because of you, we appreciate you. You are one in a million. If I come, we come again to this world, we want you as a father. We love you. Lord, what are your mercy? Tiba sonunje ulori wa akiba ba wa ikuba ba yi alase awon gangan osa aki won ku orire alaafin oba yoruba i salute you i salute your courage i salute your wisdom your sagacity i salute your ability to gather your people together and transform their lives. I salute Kabiesi, your generosity, your kindness to your people. I sincerely wish him many, many more years on the throne of his fathers and, of course, for the benefit of Yorubas. I wish they are laughing well and uh, a good time celebrating his birthday. Ilaiwalo <laughs> Ni bi o wa to lari ni ba wole baba re so ki ati wewe je oko oju olapelu le yo ti ba lapeji koya jija omo le lo si si